I'm going to be talking about how psychedelic experiences could affect people's perceptions of sex and also body image. So why this topic? So when I think of psychedelics, and when a lot of people think of, think of psychedelics, they think of the 60s counterculture movements and hippies, etc. And this usually comes tied to the concept of free love, um, things like these, for example. And so sex and psychedelics have been tied together in people's minds for a very long time, but the science hasn't really addressed it at all. When I looked up psychedelics and sex on PubMed and several different variants, what I could find was this, which is a paper um, looking at um, LSD for converting gay people to um, heterosexuality, which is obviously incredibly outdated and definitely not what we're looking at doing right now at all. But it didn't seem like many people were having these kinds of discussions or including sex questions in their clinical trials that I could find anyway. But what, what have we been doing? We've been looking at the use of psychedelics for several different conditions, as you all can see here, and as you all know, I'm sure. And there, why do we think psychedelics are useful for all these things? Why do we think that they could work? Without going into the neurobiology or anything too complicated, the way I see it is that we see psychedelics as having the power to change people's perceptions of themselves, of the world around them, of people, etc. So I thought to myself, how um, can psychedelics change people's perceptions of sex? So I sent a, a little battery of questions about sex to lots of my colleagues and we included it in five different studies that we have at Imperial College London. So these are all the studies. I was managing the depression trial, but all of these other studies were conducted by other people. And so I just want to thank them here and also Kenneth for making this possible and all of our supervisors. Um, and a special thanks to Hannes for doing most of the analysis that I'm actually presenting today. Um, but I'm going to be talking about only two studies today, but you can ask about the other ones in the, in the questions if you like. So firstly, the Global Psychedelic Survey. This is an online observational study, um, and we were asking people questions before and after an informal psychedelic experience. So taking psychedelics at home or at a party or a festival or anything like that. But the ceremony study is also online and observational, but we were asking people questions before and after a formal psychedelic experience like a psilocybin or ayahuasca retreat. But if you put both of these together, um, what, we were do, what we're doing is we're asking people questions about their sex lives and perceptions before and after any kind of psychedelic experience. And that's what I'm going to be looking at today. So back to my original question, can psychedelics change people's perceptions of sex? So there was nothing in this in the literature. So Hannes and I devised a tiny little scale called the Sexual Perceptions Questionnaire, still unvalidated. Um, but we people could sc uh, choose scores from one to seven, and it was whether they agreed or disagreed with two statements. So we were curious to know whether people were open to trying new things in their sex life, and whether they saw sex as spiritual or sacred, uh, as a spiritual or sacred experience after taking psychedelics. So what were the results? Firstly, um, just I'm going to have these graphs throughout the presentation. So here's baseline. So before people take any psychedelic, this is four weeks after psychedelic and this is six months after psychedelics. These are scored out of seven here. And these are the p-values for um, baseline to four weeks and baseline to six months. But you can just look at the little stars and the bigger the amount of stars, the more significant the difference is. Um, so as you can see here, we found that there was a significant increase in people's openness to trying new things in their sex lives after taking psychedelics. And did, this did last up to six months, which is quite amazing. Um, and we also saw that there was a really significant increase in people seeing sex as a spiritual experience after taking psychedelics also um, lasting up to six months. So in both cases, there were increases. So we asked further questions. Firstly, can psychedelics change people's perceptions about their bodies? And this is particularly important because bodies are so linked to our perceptions of sex as well and how we feel about ourselves and conditions such as anorexia like Meg spoke about. Um, and also the question of can psychedelics promote sexual flourishing? And 
the concept of sexual flourishing I kind of created because when I was managing the depression trial and working on the previous um, pilot study for depression, we found that psilocybin did not cause sexual dysfunction in the pilot study, but um, other antidepressants are known to cause things like sexual dysfunction, for example. So lots of people were talking about sexual dysfunction in the literature, but they weren't talking about whether psychedelics could move that in a positive direction, something like a sexual flourishing, which, which isn't, I don't think, a concept that really exists. We have flourishing in terms of well-being, but we don't really have it for sex. But that is what I mean when I use that term. So um, we use this brief inventory of sexual functioning. It's a huge scale, so I just selected a few of the items. Firstly, we were asking people, um, have you felt pleasure from any form of sexual experience? Then how, how much do you feel like you can communicate your preferences and desires to your partner? Um, how satisfied are you with your sexual relationship with your partner? And how important is sex as part of your life? And finally, how satisfied are you with your body? So those are the questions that we asked. So firstly, the sexual flourishing ones. So we asked about pleasure. As you can see, there was a really significant increase in people's reported ability to feel pleasure during sex. Um, these are scored out of, out of five, so people already started quite high, but there was still a very significant increase, and this did last significantly up to six months, though not as much. Then communication, we did find that there was a really strong significant increase in people's ability to communicate to their sex partners what desires and preferences they had, which is quite amazing, I think. And this did last up to six months as well. Then we have um, dissatisfaction. So this is actually how dissatisfied are you with your partner? So with, your, with sex with your partner. So um, dropping is a good thing. So we found that there were significant decreases in dissatisfaction with your partner at four weeks, and this lasted up to six months as well. Um, and we found absolutely no change, significantly spe statistically speaking, in the importance that ha sex had to people's lives after taking a psychedelic. So body image we found that there was a significant decrease in body dissatisfaction. So this is also a bit confusing. So going down is a good thing because the more you go down, the less dissatisfied you become with your body. So um, we did find there was a marked decrease in this dissatisfaction and this also remained for six months quite significantly. That's what we found. And for the purposes of this talk, um, I'm also going to compare gender, just because I thought it was interesting since it's a women in psychedelics talk. We did include an other gender as well, so not just men and women, but we only have 15 participants who selected that option, which isn't enough to include in a study. So I will just be comparing men and women in this talk. So firstly, um, this is a bit different. These stars relate to the, not, the, not the differences in increase, but the differences between the groups. So here, for example, there is a significant difference between men and women at baseline. So that's what, that's what these stars represent. Um, here are men and here are women. So I thought this was really interesting and kind of ex what I expected as well, but it's kind of cool to see in the data. Men um, reported significantly greater pleasure in all three time points than women did, which is quite interesting. Um, and this one's also interesting. So men started by saying that they were more able to communicate their desires and preferences to their partners in comparison to women. So there was a significant difference at baseline, but that this evened out afterwards and they both follow the same pattern, but women increased enough so that there isn't any statistical difference between men and women after psychedelics. They're both able to communicate in the same way or so they say. Then we have sexual dissatisfaction again. Both men and women start with the same levels of sexual dissatisfaction with their partners. And then this goes down in the same way. And this I found really interesting. And, and um, at six months, women go back up a bit, but men continue to be more and more um, satisfied with their partners while women become a bit more dissatisfied, which is quite interesting. Um, and finally, um, body dissatisfaction. So as I expected as well, um, women, start with greater body dissatisfaction than men, probably something to do with um, society, uh, but that this evened out afterwards, that there is no statistical significant difference between men and women at four weeks and six months post-psychedelics, which is quite amazing. 
is the last one. So sex is a spiritual experience, um, like the pleasure one, but reversed. Women reported agreeing with the statement that sex was a spiritual experience much more than men in all three time points. So there's a difference between the, all groups in all three time points. It's probably something to do with semantics or how we talk about sex to both genders maybe. So in summary, um, we saw significant improvements in almost everything we looked at, communication, sexual satisfaction and body dissatisfaction. The only thing we didn't see a change in is the importance of sex. Um, and here are the differences between men and women, but I won't go through them all. I can always go back to the slide if people want a refresher. Limitations are no placebo control, as Laura said, many issues with observational studies. We can't know if these things are really true. It's just what people are reporting. So it might be that we, we can't measure whether people were actually feeling more pleasure, for example. Also, we start, we had loads of people complete at baseline, but we only included the 258 who completed the six months in this research. So this is a much smaller sample because so many less people finished the trial and many others, but this is just hopefully the start of more debate and more research on this really important subject. That's such an important part of the human experience. So thank you to Hannes for all this analysis and thank you to all of our other partners who were involved in this research that we did. Thank you so much for having me.